Hi, Mr. D. This is the Mid South. We love our tomatoes, but tomatoes we know have many problems. They do. They do. We need a spray schedule for our tomatoes. Can you help us out? I can. I okay. can. I mean, the UT and the Red Book mm -hmm. can also help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common problem on, on tomatoes uh, in our high humidity environment is, is uh, blight. Yes. And uh, late blight is uh, the number one disease mm -hmm. problem on tomatoes in our area. And it occurs early. In the yeah, season. it comes I, early. Yeah, I don't know why they call yeah. it late blight. But uh, the, 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 the best way to take care of that is to put your tomatoes on a spray schedule. Uh, uh, you need to remember, for the most part, fungicides, especially vegetable fungicides that are approved on vegetables, are preventative in nature only. Mm -hmm. So if you wait until you see the disease, then you, you're, you're, you're behind in the game because the fungicides that we put out there on vegetables are, will not treat a problem. They simply will prevent it from spreading. Right. So if, if, I, if you want to pre prevent tomato disease problems, start spraying early. Spray if during dry conditions every 14 days with either chlorothalonil or mancozeb. If it's r during rainy conditions, <laughs> if you haven't gotten more than a two inch rain, then just still you can spray about every seven days. Okay. If it rains more than two inches, oh. you assume it washed the fungicide off. Now that, if you apply the fungicide uh, today and it rains tomorrow, a half inch rain, just stick on the seven day schedule, provided, provided that the fungicide had time to dry on the plant. Okay. Now if you get out there and spray right now and 15 minutes later <laughs> you, get a, you get a half inch rain, right. then your fungicide's washed off. Right. So, so it needs to dry on the leaves uh, before it's rain fast. Uh, during dry conditions, if we don't get a lot of rain, you could spread that length of time out to 14 days. Uh, every two weeks, and I recommend uh, uh, mixing the chemistry. You know, mentioned Mancozeb mm -hmm. and Chlorothalonil. Uh, get both of those products, and then I would spray one of them one week and uh -huh. the other one the next week, and just alternate them. Right. Um, that way, you will uh, hopefully prevent uh, uh, resistance building up with that fungus. Yeah. Uh, but uh, do that uh, if you start to see some insects causing you a problem there, uh, tomato hornworms or something like mm -hmm. that, simply include some BT in that same spray mixture, you know, and, and you can so mix, you can you, do you that. Can mix the sure. fungicide okay. with the insecticides. Right. And, and, uh, and, and the, or if you don't have any insect problems, just strictly go with the fungicide. Okay. But if you do that, and you do that up until frost, <laughs> you should have good homegrown tomatoes until that time. So you would start with the application with the fungicides when? Now. Now. now, because the disease pressure is already out there, right? I would start now. Uh, I wouldn't wait until I see the disease, you know, because then you're behind. Stay ahead of the game with with fungicides. And you got to make sure you have to get good coverage, though. Let me talk about that. You got to have good yeah. coverage. Uh, you need to spray to the point of runoff. You don't have to drench the plant and let yeah. let it run off the plant, but spray to just before that happens. And that's like tightening the bolt. To like one quarter of an inch before it breaks. You know, it's really kind of hard to figure out exactly how to do that. But spray just to the point of runoff. Make sure you direct your spray to the underside of the leaves right. and to the right. lower the plant. You've got to get really good coverage. So with these small tomato plants, that's real easy to do <laughs> when, it, when, it, when they're real small. Uh, as they get larger, then you've got to, it'll take more product yeah. and, and it'll take a little bit more time uh, to, to make sure that you, you know, get good coverage. But you know, make sure you have, have good coverage with it. It's, a, it's just like a, applying a, it's a prophylactic treatment. It's a, like a raincoat. Yeah. And, and is any area of that leaf that's not protected uh, is susceptible. Of, the, most of these fungicide, or fun, fungus diseases are, are caused by wind mm -hmm. deposited spores. And if a spore lands on a fungicide treated leaf, it's gonna die. But if it lands on a leaf that doesn't have any fungicide on it, you know, it, it will, start spreading. Good analogy. Yeah, and, and, and if you get to, the, like I said earlier, if you get to the point where you've got some disease anyway, if you're in a real rainy week or two and you've got some disease, just continue spraying and you will stop it from spreading to the new growth. You won't, the, the, the leaves that are damaged will continue to be damaged, but they'll, 
it won't spread to your new right. growth. And so, right. so don't get discouraged if you have a little disease pressure anyway. Uh, but uh, be faithful, seven to 14 days. Uh, Mancozeb, Chlorothalidil, a combination of those. And uh, follow label directions, yeah, follow always label. follow label directions. Uh, wash your tomatoes real good yes. when you, you know, before you eat them. Yes. So. When is the best time to spray the fungicide? Because I'm sure somebody's thinking about that. I would say uh, you, want, you want to make sure the fungicide dries on the plant. So probably the worst time to spray would be late in the afternoon yeah. right before sundown, okay. right at dark right. or at night because that plant will stay wet longer mm -hmm. and fungal diseases like wet conditions. Right. So early in the day, middle of the day, you know, mid-afternoon, as long as, as that plant can dry after you apply the product, then you're in good shape. You want to make sure it dries. We'll make sure the plant can dry. A couple other points. Uh, talk about the importance of using mulch. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, mulch is, is really good because uh, uh, some of the uh, fungal organisms are, are if rainfall, they'll splash up from the ground. And if you have a good, good mulch, good straw mulch, uh, or newspaper, newspaper, or pine straw, or wheat straw, mm -hmm. or leaf, any kind of mulch uh, will, will uh, not only help prevent disease to the lower part of that plant, but it'll also, you know, help conserve water and uh, help control weeds. That's right. Which is really important. Weed barrier. Mr. D, that's good stuff. Also, mm -hmm. staking the plant, right. getting it up. Getting it off the uh, ground. Right. Well, is, is, you know, any way you can get air movement. Right. So that will help the plant dry is also right. good too. Right. And we talked about that earlier, Miss Debbie. Sure air have. circulation is very important to get those leaves to dry off. That's right. Mr. D, we appreciate that. It's good good deal. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.